All right, excellent. Well, let's get started here. Um, let me ask you a question. Have you ever been in a situation where maybe you purchase a new piece of technology, maybe you bought a new computer or a new phone, and you start messing around with it, start pressing buttons here and there, maybe a new TV, and uh, you're, you're pressing buttons all over the place. And before you know it, you get to uh, a place where weird stuff is happening, you don't know how to fix it, how to adjust it, and you say, wait, you know, maybe you're 30 minutes into it, an hour into it, and you're like, oh my gosh, if I could only reset everything, if I could only start over again. Or maybe you started a piece of furniture from Ikea, and with their very uh, straightforward instructions, you started building the thing, and as you're building it, all of a sudden, maybe it's a table, and one leg doesn't seem like it quite fits, but you're certain this is the F part, right? And, and, and you're, but you've gotten into it and you said, ah, I don't need that manual. You got into it because you're, you're that type of person. I am too. Uh, and, and you just get into it and then you, you realize, oh man, I wish I could start over. I wish I could start over. Well, when we start a new year, that's kind of the advantage or it's not really a thing, but we kind of make it a thing. So every year we feel like this year I'm going to start fresh. All the resolutions I didn't meet yes last year, then this year we're going to do it. And, and maybe you're at that place right now in January where you're like, man, it'd be nice to reset. It'd be nice to reset on, you know, some of that cake that I had throughout the holidays. It'd be nice to reset on some of the decisions I've made. And uh, I want to talk to you about a lady, a, a woman that was in that same type of situation. She, she kind of needed a, a fresh start. She needed to start over again. A couple of things about this woman. Uh, first of all, you should know that this woman, her background wasn't the best background. Uh, she came from a, a class in society that was kind of looked down upon. Um, and But this woman, nevertheless, she was living her life and she was being who God had called her to be. And she was doing the best she could with life. Now, she got married and she found this man that really loved her. She really loved him. And they got together. And I mean, at first, everything looked great. They were happy. They were enjoying life. They had plans for the future. But as life would have it, they started drifting away. So eventually, the two ended up divorced. Uh, and she thought she'd never find happiness again. But but she did. She found happiness again. And there was this other man, and he was, he was perfect. He was great. She really loved him. He really loved her. And, and man, they had a great time together. Every time they went out, they, they just enjoyed each other's company. Um, but as life would have it, they too started drifting apart. Things just weren't the same anymore. And uh, they started drifting. Well, this woman didn't just do this two times. Turns out this woman was married five times, and it never worked out. Um, and, t and in fact, it, it didn't work out, and she decided finally, you know, I'm not going to get into this marriage thing again. But she did have somebody, but they just weren't married. Now, if you know the Bible, you might know that I'm talking about the Samaritan woman. Uh, this is a woman that Jesus meets by a well, by Jacob's well. And when he meets her, he, he tells her all about her life. Now, this story is a story that you might be familiar with, but let me tell you something about this woman. This woman needed a fresh start. She didn't know that she needed a fresh start, but she needed to start over again. I mean, this relationship thing just wasn't working out for her. And, and this was really symptomatic of, of deeper issues in her life. I mean, five husbands, five marriages don't work out. And now you're with this man. He's not even your husband. And, uh, you know, so uh, there was just so much going on in her life. But she meets Jesus. Isn't it interesting how we can sometimes meet Jesus? How we can sometimes get to a place where Jesus confronts us. And when he confronts us, we say, well, things have to change. Well, I, I want to talk to you today about a reset. 
If you want a reset in 2022, how do you go about it? What do you have to do if you want a reset? Well, I want to share three things that I believe we get from this woman's story that talk to us about how our lives can be restarted, reset in some ways. And there's really good news because it is possible. The first thing I want to tell you is that if you want to reset your life in 2022, what you need to do is, first of all, change your fountain. Change your fountain. You're like, what, what are you talking about? I don't have a fountain. You know, I have a sink. Uh, I have several sinks, maybe, but I don't have a fountain. No, we all have a fountain. When I talk about a fountain, I'm talking about that thing, that thing that you keep going back to, thinking that that thing is going to satisfy you for life. Let's go to this story. It says soon, and we're reading out of John chapter 4. It says soon a Samaritan woman came to draw water and Jesus said to her, please give me a drink. Now let's talk about where she was from. She was from Samaria. She was a Samaritan woman. What does that mean? Well, it means that she was from a mixed race. She was uh, really someone that came from ancestors who had intermarried with Assyrians and Gentiles. So they weren't purebred Jews. And because she wasn't a purebred Jew, uh, Jews kind of looked down upon her. They, they thought she's a mixed race and Jews didn't even get along with Samaritans. Uh, they are different. They, they believe that they are pagans. They worship different. And, and uh, Jews did not want to mix in with these untouchable Samaritans. So Jesus, Samaritan, obviously Jesus is a Jew, and it says that soon a Samaritan woman came to draw water, and Jesus said to her, please give me a drink. He was alone at the time because his disciples had gone into the village to buy some food. The woman was surprised, for Jews refused to have anything to do with Samaritans. She said to Jesus, you are a Jew, and I am a Samaritan woman. Why are you asking me for a drink? That makes all the sense in the world. She knew the culture. The culture is that Jews and Samaritans don't get along. And you could blame it on the Jews. You could blame it on the Samaritans. It doesn't matter. The, the idea is that they weren't getting along. So for this Jewish man to come to a Samaritan woman and ask for anything was a stretch. But he asked her for a drink, Jesus replied, if you only knew the gift God has for you. I'm going to stop there for a minute because that's important. So many of us think that God wants to take something from us. God doesn't want to take anything from us. God wants to give us things. He says, if you knew the gift that God has for you, if you knew what God has for you, if you knew that, doesn't that make you think for a minute? Because it sounds like Jesus is asking, right? Isn't he asking for the drink? Isn't he the one that is thirsty? Isn't he the one asking? But he turns around and he says, if you knew who was asking you, and if you knew what I wanted to do in your life, I want to stop right there because I want you to know, first and foremost, that whatever God asks for you or from you, it's not for himself. There's nothing that you can give God that he doesn't already own. Everything that God has, he already owns. It's already his. So if you only knew the gift that God has for you, some of you are thinking, you know, I don't want to go to church because it's just too much. You know, I don't want to really serve the Lord because it's just too much. It's just too much of a burden. It's much to do. But if you knew what God has for you, you might say, I'll give up a little sleep on a Sunday morning. I'll give up whatever it is that God is wanting me to give up. If you really knew that it's not about God. It's not about what you can give God, but it's about what God wants to give you, gift you. You don't have to pay for it. It's, it's yours. He says, if you knew the gift God has for you and who you are speaking to, you would ask me and I would give you living water. 
She says, but sir, you don't have a rope or a bucket, she said, and this well is very deep. Where would you get this living water? And besides, do you think you're greater than our ancestor Jacob who gave us this well? I can imagine Jesus, as soon as she asked that question, like wanting to interrupt her, well, you know, yeah, I kind of am greater than Jacob. How can you offer better water than he and his sons and his animals enjoyed? Jesus replied, watch this. Anyone who drinks this water will soon become thirsty again. But those who drink the water I give will never be thirsty again. It becomes a fresh bubbling spring within them, giving them eternal life. This is how you know that Jesus is not talking to her about actual water. Because the truth is, is that Christians still drink water. I mean, we still get thirsty. I'm kind of thirsty right now, if I'm honest with you. I mean, we still drink. Uh, It's not like this lady never drank water again after meeting Jesus. And Jesus is in this particular situation. He himself is, is telling her he's thirsty. So Jesus can't be talking about real water. He's talking about something that's greater than water. Uh, But it's something that truly satisfies. It doesn't just satisfy the palate, but rather it satisfies the soul. He's talking about a living water. And this woman, one thing about her that you got to give her credit is that she understands not just what he's talking about, but she understands that this water that that he's talking about is the kind of water she needs. You see, she had been trying to satisfy this thirst with relationships. She tried men, and she thought that men would be able to satisfy this desire in her. But five husbands later, and even this one husband that is not hers, we're going to read about it in just a moment, uh, this one husband that's not even hers, She knows that I've been trying to satisfy something. This is what Jesus tells her. Please, sir, the woman said, give me this water. Then I'll never be thirsty again, and I won't have to come here to get water. And this is what Jesus replies. Great. Go and get your husband. Go and get your husband. Now, that's that's a weird, that's a weird thing to say. She wants water. He said that he can give her this water. Okay, give me the water, she says. And he says, go get your husband. What? How how much water are we talking here? Like, how much water do we have to take? Does he have to help me get the water? Jesus is not talking about actual water. Uh, Christians still get thirsty even 2,000 years later. In fact, uh, just this week, I ordered a water company to come and do water deliveries for me because our our family just consumes so much water. Uh, We get thirsty. Christians do get thirsty. But there's a greater thirst that Jesus is talking about. He's talking about the, the soul thirst, the soul thirst. And by Jesus saying, go and get your husband, you know what he was actually saying, to put it in my words? Go and get your fountain. Go, go to your fountain right now. The fountain, you know, that habit, maybe that sinful habit, maybe that addiction, go to that thing right now and bring it to me. That's what he's saying. Go and get your husband. Go and get your fountain and bring it over. Go and get your fountain. He is basically leading her to saying, that's not the fountain that's going to help you. I've got the fountain that's going to help you. I've got what you need. I've got what you really, what your soul really thirsts for. You see, the reality is, is that your soul really thirsts for a relationship with God. Uh, you, you, could, you could try addiction, you could try uh, your sinful habits, you could try whatever. None of those will fully satisfy you like Jesus will fully satisfy. Go and get your husband, Jesus told her. I don't have a husband, the woman replied. Jesus said, you're right. 
You don't have a husband, for you have had five husbands, and you aren't even married to the man you're living with now. You certainly spoke the truth. Jesus says, yeah, you're right. You don't have a husband. Think about that for a minute. You've been searching for something all this time. You've been chasing after something all this time. And what's sad is that you still don't even have it. Let that sink in for a minute. You've been going after whatever it is, whether it's wealth, whether it's relationships, you've been diving into relationships, you've been diving into everything that this world, maybe you're, you're that type of person that's seeking fame and, or, or whatever it is that, that your, your fountain is, that thing that you think is going to fully satisfy you. Maybe it's, you know, when I meet that person, when I meet that special someone, or when I, or when I encounter this particular situation, or when I get this dream job, you've been chasing for it all this time, and you still don't even have it. This woman had five husbands, and she still didn't have a husband. <laughs> this is incredible. You know, the truth is, is that you're going to go chasing after things in this world, and you're going to continue to chase and chase and chase and chase. And if you don't have Jesus, you will simply continue to chase after things in this world. And here's the terrible news. You'll never even get those things. And sometimes even when you get those things, you still realize that you're not fully satisfied. This is why we hear of wealthy people that will tell you, wealth doesn't satisfy. This is why we hear of famous people, celebrities that say fame is not all it's cracked up to be. It doesn't fully satisfy. Let me tell you something, Jesus fully satisfies. It doesn't matter who you are, where you're from, the truth is, is that you need to change your fountain. You need to stop chasing after those things that cannot satisfy. The second thing is that you need to, if you're going to start over again, you need to replace your religion with relationship. Some of you might, might hear me and say, well, you know what? I don't chase after sinful habits or, or I don't chase after addiction. I'm a church going person. I, I go to church all the time. But some of us we have replaced relationship with religion. I say, no, you want to do the opposite. You want to replace religion with relationship. Let's go to the story. She said, sir, the woman said, you must be a prophet. So tell me, why is it that you Jews insist that Jerusalem is the only place of worship while we Samaritans claim it is here at Mount Gerizim where our ancestors worshiped? First of all, if you feel like, like, like I just threw you off, if right now you feel like, wow, left field, I have, I'm lost now. If you feel that way, it's not because I lost you, but it's rather because the Samaritan woman lost you. How did she lose you? Jesus is talking about water and thirst and satisfaction and all these things, right? And what does she do? She doesn't want to replace her fountain. So she wants to go to religion. She, she wants to change the subject. Have you ever spoken to somebody about Jesus and they want to change the subject? They don't want to talk about Jesus. They want to talk about something different. They want to talk about, uh, you know, why is it that blah, 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 right? And you're like, well, we weren't talking about that. To me, it, it's always amazed me how I've met people that they want to get deep into theology, deep into the scriptures, right? And even see things that the Bible doesn't even really show you exp explicitly. And they really want to get deep there, um, but their marriages are a wreck or their home is a wreck, or their, their relationships are a wreck. And it's like, you know what? Hey, hey, put that stuff aside for a moment, and let's talk about the things that matter here, right? Jesus is talking about a relationship with God, and she wants to go into this deep talk about worship. 
She goes, is it at Mount Gerizim that we're supposed to worship? Or, or is it in Jerusalem? Why is it that there's this debate? Because there was a debate between the Samaritans and the Jews. The Jews uh, said, you have to worship in Jerusalem. And the Samaritans, they were like, no, Mount Gerizim, that's where our ancestors worshiped. So there was a debate. It's not like there wasn't a debate. She's not totally off here. But, but the reality is, is that that's not the most important thing. Let's talk about your five husbands. Let's talk about what you've been doing. Let's talk about that man you're with that's not even your husband. Let's talk about those things. But, of course, she doesn't want to touch those things. She wants to get philosophical and theological, and she wants to talk about other things that don't even matter, right? At least not for this conversation. And this is what Jesus replies. Jesus replies, Believe me, dear woman, the time is coming when it will no longer matter whether you worship the Father on this mountain or in Jerusalem. You Samaritans know very little about the one you worship, while we Jews know all about him, for salvation comes from the Jews. But the time is coming, indeed it's here now, when true worshipers, did you get that? When true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and in truth. The Father is looking for those who will worship for him that way. You see, God's not looking for uh, worshipers that, that are hung up on their theology. And I'm not saying that theology is bad. We, we obviously need to be rooted in correct theology. But sometimes we're majoring in the minors instead of majoring in the majors. Like if you could know deep theology, but you can't treat your spouse right, like that's a problem. If you know deep theology, but you don't know how to treat people, that's a problem. Let's, let's love people first, right? So that's a problem. So he says, God is looking for true worshipers. A true worshiper is someone that their theology would match their life, like their life would match their theology. Like that it wouldn't just be about being a brainiac or being really intellectual, but it would be about loving people the way that Jesus loved them. And God, the Bible says, is looking for those worshipers. This is interesting because you would think that God would have plenty of these worshipers. In 2022, if you want to start right, you want to start with relationship rather than religion. Oh, but I go to church all the time. Oh, but I know I've been, I've been a church person forever since Moses. Like, I've been a church person since forever. Like, I, I've always been a part of this. I, I know this stuff like the back of my hand. Well, it's not about that. It's about relationship. And those of us that have been in church for a really long time, uh, we need to be most careful with this. That we don't confuse church with God. That we don't make ministry one thing uh, uh, that replaces God. Because that could be our religion. We always, always want to make sure that we have a relationship. For God is spirit, so those who worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. So if you want to start fresh in 2022, you need to make sure that you're replacing religion with relationship. That this is about having a relationship with God, not about doing all the right things. Religion is easy because, uh, frankly, religion is just a matter of to-dos, right? Like, you check things off. I did this, check. I did this, check. I did this, check. That's religion. Relationship is not like that. The difference between religion and relationship, religion is like, it's like the, the married couple that does things just because they have to do them. Like, like, they don't want to do it. There's no real heart in it. They, they're just doing it because they have to do it. Because this is what I have to do. Relationship is that I get to do this. I want to do this. You, you need to realize that you need to replace religion with relationship. Maybe you're hung up in religion. And maybe that's what's been hurting you. And maybe that's why your fountain is messed up. And that's why you're in the situation you're in. And maybe because you've made it all about religion, let's make it about relationship in 2022. And the last thing you need to do is that you need to just simply get on mission. 
That's really what it comes down to. You simply need to get on mission. So Jesus meets with this woman, right? And, and let's go to the story. Just then, his disciples came back in the middle of this conversation. The disciples come back. They were shocked to find him talking to a woman, but none of them had the nerve to ask, what do you want, to want with her? Or why are you talking to her? The woman left her water jar beside the well and ran back to the village, telling everyone. This is so good here. The woman is in a situation where she says, you know, I'm, gonna, I, I'm just going to leave my water jar here because I found what I was looking for. I came looking for water, but I'm, I'm leaving here with satisfaction spiritual satisfaction and she runs away and she leaves her water jar and what does she do she goes and she tells everyone about this encounter she says come and see a man who told me everything i ever did could he possibly be the messiah so the people came streaming from the village to see him she gets on mission I love this for a few reasons. Here, number one, no one had to tell her to go and tell people about Jesus. Oh man, how many times do we have to tell Christians, hey, you got to evangelize. You got to talk to people about Jesus. We, we have to constantly remind people to speak about their relationship to others. Uh, we, we're constantly telling people, go and witness, go and evangelize, go and be a disciple, go and tell others. This woman didn't need that. Why didn't she need that? I'll tell you why I believe she didn't need that, because she had a true encounter with the Lord. When you have a real, genuine encounter with the Lord, you can't help but tell people about Jesus. You can't help but tell them about the goodness uh, of God. You can't help but speak it out and, and be a witness everywhere you go. You can't help but tell people. This woman ran out and told everyone she could find. I love that. No one had to coerce her. Jesus didn't have to tell her, okay, now go and make disciples of all nations. No, she just went. Are you on mission like that? Are you telling people about Jesus? I mean, are are, are you talking to people about Jesus? Like, do people know about your relationship? Do people know what Jesus has done in your life and what he can do in theirs? She ran and she told them. Right away, right away. I believe mission is important because mission helps us to stay from becoming sidetracked. I think some Christians, sometimes we get sidetracked because we're bored in our faith. And if you're bored in your faith, let me tell you, you're bored in your faith because you're not on mission. That's just the reality. Because when you are on mission, there is something to do. There's no reason for boredom. And the devil, the enemy gets us when we're bored because it's when we're bored that we're vulnerable. It's when we're bored that we start finding our solutions and we start finding satisfaction in other things. And that's when gossip creeps in. That's when, uh, you know, other sin sinful habits uh, creep in. This is when addictions possibly creep in. This is where, you know, just the things that happen out of boredom. We need to get on mission. If you want 2022 to be a better year for you, you want a fresh start, you're going to have to get on mission. You need to make a decision this year to be on mission. But let me tell you, this woman had wrecked her life. Five husbands and, you know, the other guy. Uh, this woman had wrecked her life. She had messed up. And, and you might think, man, she was a hot mess. She was a real hot mess, this woman. Let me tell you what I find to be probably the best part of this story. The best part of this story is verse 39. John chapter 4, verse 39. This is what it says. Many Samaritans from the village believed in Jesus because the woman, because the woman Many Samaritans believed in Jesus because of this woman. This woman was a hot mess. But isn't it encouraging to know that God can use a hot mess? 
That it doesn't matter what you did in 2021 or before that even. That it doesn't matter what life looks like right now. Isn't it encouraging to know that God can use you? Come on, if that doesn't get you to say hallelujah there online, like I don't know what will. It's encouraging to know that, that God could use a hot mess like me. That maybe I messed it up. That maybe I did wrong. That maybe what I did was really bad. But, but God can still use me to reach people. The Bible says many Samaritans. We don't know what the number is. But many of them came out. And many of them came to faith in Jesus because of this woman's encounter. Could you say that? I mean, if 2022 ended up that way for you, that many people came to faith in Christ because of you, because of what you went and told them. I mean, I don't know if you had resolutions or not for this year, but even if you did, can you add this one to the list? Or if you didn't, could you add this one to the list? I want more people to know about Jesus through me this year than ever before. Make that your goal. And maybe you say, I've never won anyone to Christ. Well, that's good. One person, one person will give you a 100% increase. But say, this year, 2022, I'm going to tell more people about Jesus. I'm going to spend more time in mission. This year, 2022, I'm going to reset. I'm going to change my fountain. I'm going to replace my religion with a relationship with God. And I am going to be on mission. If you want a fresh start, that's the way to do it. That's the way to do it. And it doesn't matter who you are. That's the beauty of it all. It doesn't matter who you are, what you've done. Uh, God can work with that. But you've got to start today. So, where are you? What's your fountain? What is it that, what, what's that thing that you're always going back to? That thing that, that you always lean on? That thing that, that you get back to all the time? And you're thinking that thing is going to satisfy you. What is that thing? Or let me ask you, have you become so comfortable being a Christian that, that now it's not about a relationship, it's all about a religion? Maybe that's where you're at right now. I want to tell you, don't let COVID-19 uh, do that to you. Don't, don't let COVID-19 change you like that, where it all becomes dry and, and, and it's all boxed in and, and, and your God is no longer as big as he used to be because he still is very much so. Where are you? Do you need a new fountain? Do you need to replace your religion with a relationship? And are you on mission if you're not? Let me encourage you to get on mission. Get on mission and begin to do the things that God uh, has called you to do. There's there's so many great things that God has in store for your life. There's so much potential in you, but but so many times uh, we allow Satan to just have his way with us. Uh, we, we, We get used to his fountain, and, and we, we get a, a dry religion, and we get off mission, we, we get off track, get off course. This is a good opportunity for you to say, no, I'm going to get on course. I'm going to get back to the fountain, which is Jesus. I, 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 don't, I never want to be thirsty again. I want to come back to the fountain. I want to come back to a real relationship, and I want to come back to a place where I am on mission for the Lord. What if that was us? What if that's the way we treated 2022? Man, if we did that, I'm sure that God could do some amazing things in and through our lives this year. We're going to get ready to pray. And uh, if you are at that place where you say, man, I really need Jesus. I really need a relationship with the Lord. And there's no shame whether you are a Christian, whether you're not a Christian. Sometimes I, I think that even if you are a Christian, you need to say, man, yeah. I need to get back on track. And then, and this is going to be the year. 2022 is going to be the year. And I know you feel like I've said that before, but no. If you change your fountain, this will definitely be the year. So today, if you're there and you need prayer, 
can you just say, hey, pray for me if you want to put that on the chat? And I'm going to include you in this last prayer. And even if, even if you don't put it in the chat, would you uh, bow your head right there where you're at? Close your eyes. Um, doesn't matter who's around. You're probably home anyway, so it really doesn't matter who's around, right? Those people have seen you at your worst. So let's pray. I want to pray with you, and uh, we'll wrap this up. And by the way, uh, we'll see you again next week. Next week, we will be live here, although we'll be wearing our face masks, so we're going to encourage you to do that. Uh, but we are going to be here live. All of you, our doors are going to be open for our church family to come back in and uh, worship with us. But for right now, let's pray for you, and uh, let's turn this over to the Lord.